good morning well it's gonna be afternoon when this is uploaded but I want to talk to you guys about starting your businesses now um, on this YouTube channel there's a separate playlist getting started in the car business so check that out but I want to talk to you because um, you guys are bombarded with quick, easy, super profitable tactics. Hey, if you only spend $1,500 and you could be making 15,000, 20,000 per month and quit your job in four weeks. I am not offering anything remotely like that. You're looking on a three year journey. Like, let's go ahead and talk about me getting this car business. I am not going to take any money out of this business the first year. First year, all money that this business makes will be reinvested back in the business to grow the business. So, you know, I'm, I'm about to drop 150, potentially 200K on this car business. And I am not going to be able to dip in the business and pull any money out for a year, perhaps two. Perhaps two. And so many people want to get in the business, start a business, and start making money immediately. And that right there is the danger zone. Because if you don't go into this with the proper mindset, you're gonna be in for a very tough awakening. Like um, yesterday, I was out all day talking to dealers, visiting car lots, doing counts. Because essentially, uh, one place that I found out was sold September 2020, which would explain why there's no leasing sign out there, is um, I, I may have to go to Buford Highway to get started. I might have to do that. Um, because essentially the building here in Sandy Springs was sold. So once Pet Boys moves out, someone else is moving in there. Um, so there, there's a lot of problem solving to go into starting your business. Let's talk about you guys. Let's say you've never started a business before. Let's say you have a job and let's say that you're, you, you manage your money well and you got 10 to $20,000 to invest in this business you are in a really good spot but he here's the thing like even though i'm starting this car business i'm still going to keep my youtube business i'm still keep my online course business i'm still keeping that that's not going anywhere you want to know why it's income i suspect that my youtube business income is going to hit six figures. So I'm going to live off my YouTube income. I'm going to bank the Savage Consulting income. And then I'm going to invest the money that I'm paying myself out of my business into this car business. So I have a source of income to live on. I have a source of income to save and I have a source of income to invest. That's this corporate citizen thing because essentially, you know, going back to you, you got your 20,000, you get your first business and you keep your job, right? So we're, we, we got to think in terms of years. We cannot think in terms of weeks. We cannot think in terms of months because the internet 
has conditioned people improperly. Improper conditioning, improper um, expectations. Because when you go ahead and get your business plan going, you should have a 10 year plan. Because you gotta think in terms of years, you know, let's say, you know, you, you took your 20,000, you started a business, and you gotta think year two. Year two is, you know, you, you still got your job, you're running your business, you've hired employees, and now you're at the end of year two, and now year three is when you can start thinking about taking money out your business, potentially quitting your job, you, you got to think like that because a lot of this internet stuff is going to have you uh, like right now. The crypto bros. I'm making all this money from crypto. How sustainable is that? How sustainable? Can you pay your bills off your crypto money? Can you buy cars? Can you buy a house off your crypto money? So I get a lot of people who want to like, why not do both? Why not start a business and invest in crypto? I'm about to tell you exactly why. And I'm gonna tell you why I sold my Bitcoin. It's a distraction. So if you were to focus on your business and not be over here, because essentially cryptocurrency is a rabbit hole. There's so much to learn. So you're trying to learn that you're trying to keep your job. You're trying to run your business. It's too much. It's just too much. So my answer to not, why not do both is you want to be focused. You think Elon Musk, Elon Musk bought crypto for the first time last year after he became a billionaire. He wasn't buying crypto. He wasn't doing all this stuff. He was focusing on building businesses. So you, you got to focus on building your business. Uh, there's a guy who's like, you know, I'm doing crypto. I got a business. Like last year, when the pandemic started, what did I do? I doubled down. I focused on my business and I made more money than I ever made in my life. That's the power of focus. So, you know, you could be over here because essentially what's, what crypto does is it creates a certain kind of mania, mania and a religious fever. Because people think, hey, I bought me a little crypto. It's going to go to the moon and uh, I'm going to get all this money. And some people have. Some people got lucky. But luck is not a business plan. Luck is not the thing that's going to get you to where you want to be. Luck isn't. So one of the things I want to talk to you about, you know, you're, you're, you, you got to start thinking in terms of years because uh, essentially I'm in my five year plan window. I got a five year plan. I'm 54. In five years, I will be 59, 59. And in that five-year plan, I want to create multiple more streams of income. I want to lock down my first investment property, which is an apartment complex. And I want to, you know, there, there's a lot of things in my five-year plan. There, there's a lot of things in my five-year plan. And, you know, the apartment complex is a big part of the five-year plan. Because that's my retirement. Uh, Prince Albert lived to be almost 100 years old. Close to 100. And I, I just got the feeling I'm going to be around a while. So I get this apartment complex. I become permanently wealthy. And let's say I live to be 90. That is 59, 
69, 79, 89. So that's three decades in the year of good living. Good living, because uh, one of the things I look at, there's this guy on YouTube, he's 80 years old and he does CrossFit. Doesn't look like he's 80 years old. So you gotta keep doing stuff, keep moving and grooving to keep yourself together. So I have a feeling that once I make this first, uh, complete this first deal at 59, because, well, the goal is to get the apartment complex at 58. Once I get that and build up these other businesses, I'm going to build them where I have control of my free time, but I'm not going to retire. I have no intentions of retiring. I want to create a larger extension of my life as it is. Like yesterday, I, I did some stuff. I, I essentially wake up each day and I do what I want to do. I do what I want to do. And I want to increase that because, you know, I still have to do certain things. You know, I could take a week or two off. No problem. Nothing happens. But I want to create a situation where if I wanted to take a year off and just do something purely passion based. Because essentially, uh, one of the reasons I'm having this conversation with you is so many people are out here trying to build, create these revenue streams too fast. Way, way too fast. And this is why I want you to think of in terms of a three-year plan. I want you to think in terms of three-year plans, five-year plans, eight-year plans, 10-year plans. Because what you can accomplish in three years could be mind-blowing. But you got too many people who are trying to do these things in a mere weeks or a few months. And it's just not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. So, like, you know, cause I got a problem right now. I cannot get my dealer's license until I secure a spot and I have to get my business license and that means zoning. And you know, I just gotta put my head down and go through with it because zoning is, zoning, you know, like essentially when you're dealing with zoning people, like uh, the guy called me back, so I gotta call him back Monday and figure out what the deal is. Talk to, because essentially, um, he did call me back and uh, I'm gonna call him again Monday. So I gotta deal with people who don't get paid on performance. When you're dealing with the government agencies, licensing business, um, they're, they're not performance driven. So, you know, it's, you know, essentially do call me back within a few hours. So kudos to that, but I have already moved because I thought I was going to be able to get this done in May. It's probably going to be June when they get started, but I'm going to keep pushing forward. But I'm, I'm talking to you guys and dropping this to explain the process of starting a real business, of starting a business that's going to make you money for the long term. See, I'm not trying to do any more hustle stuff, you know, the JT hustles and all this other stuff, or raised entrepreneur, the Black Hustlers Club. You know, go ahead, those guys got that hustle lane and they're doing it really well. I am in the how to start a business that's gonna pay you the rest of your life lane. 
How can you start a business that's going to make money for decades? How to start a business that is going to put money in your pocket for decades. And I'm kind of intentionally staying away from the trending businesses. Uh, a few people I talked to, there, there was like an assumption that I was going to get in the trucking business. I am not getting in the trucking business. I don't think there's anything wrong with the trucking business. I just have no desire to get into the trucking business. It's just not my thing. So one of the things that I want to do and like, you know, this whole project, 150,000 invested in the business, document the process, and you know there there will be reinvestments because like i said i am not taking money out of the business for a year or two which means i have to keep my other businesses going and that that's really really pivotal because i, I want you guys to understand and this is why i keep saying keep your job because you're gonna go through the same thing with your business. Right now, um, you can check out the Black Hustlers Club. He went through a two year process of not making any money or making very little money, two years. And this is his beginning of his third year. The three year period, once again, like essentially um, you got people out here who will be struggling. You have people out here who are operating on false information. You got people out here who are not aware of what they need to be doing. And this is one of the reasons I'm having these conversations with you because, and it's one of the reasons I, I do these exposés. Like when that dude said, He's a millionaire and he never made more than 40,000. Give me the details on that. Did this person receive an inheritance? Did this per, I, I really want to know the details because I've, I've done the math. If this person started investing, making 40K at 22, if he invested for 30 years based upon income available, he wouldn't have a million dollar portfolio. And I, I, I talk to you guys that way so you are 100 percent aware and you're not buying these wolf tickets because i've seen many people who uh there's one guy now he had a really high income really high income and he became an asset-based millionaire and you know most millionaires are asset-based millionaires. They're not cash money millionaires. You don't enter into the cash money millionaires until you hit 10 million net worth. You don't, you don't really hit, hit that. And like I said, you no, know, it's not bad being an asset-based millionaire. I just want you to understand what you're getting into What's the re reality of your financial situation? What you're getting yourself into, what you're trying to build, what you're trying to create. I want you guys to be aware. I want you guys to be cognizant of it because if you operate in truth, and this is what I'm saying, you're looking at the three year journey. So if you see this video, it's like I'm starting a business and I'm looking at a three year journey. This is going to mentally arm you for the journey because there's many people who have started a business and because they did not know that they were on a three year journey, they quit. It's like, man, I've been doing this six months and it ain't really going that well. I ain't making that much money. They didn't know. They didn't know it wasn't gonna happen in six months. They didn't know it wasn't gonna happen in a year. They didn't know it wasn't gonna happen in two years. Like, I'm about to embark. Uh, my my journey's gonna be a little bit faster. Um, 
like I'm looking at different business models. I'm looking at um, because there, there's a lot of disappointment because I want to really get started, but I want to get started correctly. So there is a point of, you know, patience. I got to have patience. But this first year, if I can get my car rental business up to 50,000 50, a month revenue, that's a win. That is a win. And then just keep reinvesting, keep buying more cars, keep putting them on the platform, and then start doing other media. If I can get to 50,000 and you know maintain that, stay at 50, that's $600,000 a year of revenue of capital that I can put into the car business. I want you to think about that. Because essentially, I don't know really a lot about the car business at the moment. I got so much to learn. I have so much to learn. And you know, just that conversation the other day with the guy who was selling the Range Rovers, I've seen, and I had two meetings uh, one car lot, all they buy are Hondas and Toyotas. That's the only thing they buy. They don't buy nothing else. And this guy, I, I see that there's power in specialization. And I can already figure out why. If you're, not, if you're only buying a certain type of car, you're going to know what type of issues these cars typically have. And you're going to have a plan to mitigate that. Like this guy literally had... 55 Range Rovers on his lot. He had a few other cars, but I could tell it was the Range Rovers that was selling. And he didn't even have a parking lot. And th this is something else I've noticed too. A lot of these dealers don't have parking lots. Um, they just don't. And not having a parking lot does not prevent them from selling cars. They are selling cars left and right. They are selling cars like crazy. And, um, you know, I'm going to be heavily on the internet. I'm going to go back to my roots of Craigslist. I'm going to um, do a lot. But once again, guys, you are on a three year journey. You're on a three year journey. Okay. First year is just like, like I said, I'm gonna spend this first year just shaping up. I'm literally running around in research investigation phase. And then once I get my license, then I can start cooking with gas, but I cannot get my license until I get a location. That's the ticket. Um, I gotta get a location, gotta get a spot, I gotta get all this other stuff. And, you know, I think this is gonna be good to show you guys what goes into starting a real business. Because he here's the thing, and th this is one of the most frustrating things about the internet space. I am going in with 150,000 cash, okay? And I am still looking at deploying that cash, building that business, and not taking money out of that business for a year or two. Because essentially, once I get the car rental business to create revenue, then I will use that revenue to buy new cars. So I've got revenue coming in and once I figure out where I want to be, because um, I've talked to several dealers, the prices at the auctions right now are insane. <clears throat> They're insane. And it's because of COVID. Do you know 
that repo man ain't repoing. The foreclosure man ain't foreclosing. So I did not know because the guy said with the repo market being down because uh, he said new cars, they're not making um, new cars as fast. They're not making as many new cars. So the new car market's down and people are holding on to the used cars. So this has created a deficit in the market. This has created a lot of demand. Like right now, houses. People are getting in bidding wars on houses. There's just not as many houses for sale and everybody wants a house. So it's interesting because you know, you can always find a deal. You can always find a deal. Uh, one of the things I'm really good at is finding people to buy from because I can find deals on Craigslist, buy it at a price, take it to my dealer's lot and flip it. So there, there, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on. But yeah, the repo man ain't repoing. And this year, because of COVID, is going to be, you know, because let's say I started in June. So June will be get the beginning. And we'll go from June 2021 to June 2022. That's the first year. That's the first year. So we got a lot to do. A lot that we got to work on. A lot that we've got to get together. Because ideally, if I have to start off in an office as a broker, I'll do that. Um, because essentially, the key is to get started. Because you cannot get marketplace data until you get started. You just can't do that. So that's the key to get started. And then start the, like I said, get into it. And you know, uh, one of the reasons I'm doing these videos and I'm showing the people in the art of holding and the corporate toolbox behind the scenes stuff is to let people know what the real deal is. Because let me just say this again, I'm putting $150,000 in this business and I probably am not going to take money out for two years, which is the antithesis of many things that you're seeing here online. You're seeing that you can spend 500, 1500, and then start making 15, dollars $30,000 within a matter of weeks. You know, this, this is very, very different. This is different game that I'm trying to put y'all up on because if you don't have the right mindset, you will perish in these rough streets, you will perish. You won't make it because one of the things is that everyone is trying to do stuff in these ridiculously compressed timelines and it just ain't going to work. So you, you got to have some patience and I'm an impatient person. I'm an impatient person, but I know that I have to have patience to do this. I have to have patience to um, get this thing going. I have to have patience, man. Um, I need to really, because essentially, like, I really want to get this thing started like tomorrow, right? But how I build it, how I set it up is how it's going to perform. And if I just go ahead and slap some stuff together, I'm going to have issues. I'm going to have a lot of issues. So it's really interesting that this whole process, 
it's very interesting and it's very intriguing because once we get this thing together, it's just gonna be printing money. But once again, I gotta remind you guys, you're looking at three years. And no one on YouTube is really talking about this. It's, you know, cause it, it, it doesn't get the views. Like the uh, playlist, the getting in the car business, it's not getting that many views cause I'm talking about hard work, I'm talking about research, I'm talking about delayed gratification. People are like, I ain't trying to watch that, man. I ain't trying to hear that, man. I'm not trying to hear that, man. I, I'm not trying to be that way, man. Like, give you an example. Like, uh, I'm gonna do this video later today. I made a mistake with my five to ten thousand dollar credit card video um i'm going to talk about it in that video but essentially if you have bad credit you're kind of screwed and no one is really trying to help you you got to help yourself but essentially with all of the things that are happening all the things that we're building up that if you fall off and let's talk about this, you know, going back to your example, you got a job, you got 20K saved, you're in a good position. You got to work real hard to keep that position because when you fall off, ugly things happen. It is going to get so hard to uh, fix your credit. This is why Joe Biden, you know, because he they, they can start on it while he's in office, but it won't be realized until he's out of office. Um, but this is another reason that I push you guys to start small businesses and increase your cash flow so you can stay out of the danger zone. Because the danger zone is real. The danger zone is a hundred percent real the danger zone is it is so deep because typically the social economic class that you're born in is the one that you're pretty much going to die in and because people don't have this knowledge of creating value and starting businesses because you know there are many people out here who think you guys are idiots. You know, whenever I put start a business and there's levels to starting a business, you can start an eBay business, you can start a service business, not that difficult and start making some additional cash. And I get people come in like, you know, most businesses fail. You, if you're trying to start the next Facebook, the next Amazon, the next Walmart, the next Home Depot, chances are you're gonna fail. You wanna know why you're gonna fail? Because anyone that's trying to start one of those businesses is gonna need billions in funding. Not millions, billions in funding. So you're gonna to have to raise 10 to 20 billion just to get in the game. Just to get in the game. So yeah, if you're gonna do that, yeah, more likely you're gonna fail. But if you're trying to start a small business and make between 1,500 and 5,000 a month, that's something you can do. You know, 5,000 a month is $60,000 a year. And you keep your job, I keep stressing this because everybody's like, I hate my job, I'm out my job. You know, Black Customers Club, once he made 200 bucks, uh, he, he, he quit his job. See, he, here's the thing. And this is a millennial, younger generation thing. Look, you need to keep your job until your job interferes with your business. I feel that the Black Hustlers Club that kept his job and kept working, he would have got where he is quicker, much quicker. 
And a lot of people don't see that because they're like, look, man, I don't want to work 70 hours a week. You don't want to be rich then. Let me say this again. I don't want to work 70, 80 hours a week. You don't want to be rich. Because more than likely, that's what it's going to take to set that up. More than likely, that is what's going to be required for you to um, have that kind of business thing going on. That's the reality. That is um, the necessity of starting a business from scratch. Long hours. I mean, I get a lot of you, and this is why so many of you on this crypto thing. Because <clears throat> you sit in front of your computer and buy coins and flip coins. You don't have to go out here and do any work. I feel that's going to catch up with you because you're training yourself to make money one way. And just like that stripper thing, you're going to make yourself unfit <clears throat> to do work any other way. So this is what I'm saying, man. You got a three year journey. You got. Um, you got to dig down deep. You, and also, you got to have written goals. You need to write your goals down. You need to be aware of how writing your goals down and because see, when you write your goals down, you know exactly what you want. You know where you want to go. It's like you're creating a blueprint, right? So many people don't want to write their goals down. So many people just want to get off on one of these little template businesses, start making all this money, quit their job, and be in Miami on the boat for the weekend. <clears throat> Do this in weeks. I mean, that's not the thing, man. That's just not the thing. It's not. So that's all I got for you animals today. You're on that three year journey. Impressing your mind that you're gonna be working hard for the next three years. And you will be mentally prepared to do the work that will be required to move you to the next level. Um, I had this one clown, cause I, I did a video where I stated that someone paid cash for a house. I don't know what it is with you people who cannot conceive paying cash for houses, cannot conceive paying cash for cars. I don't know what's up with you people. You folks are of the low expectation having collective. My next house, I'm paying cash for it. I'm paying cash for it. I already see it. It's already on the, on the goal sheet. And my next house ain't gonna be some cheap shack in the hood. It's probably gonna be one to two million dollar house. I'm gonna pay cash for it. It's important to me. Ownership is important to me. And all of you folks who are trying to finesse, it ain't working because none of you are really gonna get wealthy trying to finesse. Like, take what happened to OnlyFans. OnlyFans was making all these people this money, then what happened? It dropped. If you Google you, YouTube, all these chicks who were making the OnlyFans videos and they had their OnlyFans page, go there. You'll see that 90% of them don't have only, <laughs> they don't have their OnlyFans page anymore. You wanna know why? Because they stopped making money. They stopped making money. So, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.